This is what I've got from the point that I considered, right? Now, just pause and think about this. This is really good news, right? Because you can see not only did I get a perfect square uh, over here on the right-hand side here, I actually got exactly the perfect square that I was after. If you go all the way back to my required to prove, there it is, right there. It's the x part of the circle equation that's being squared there. So this is great, right? All I did was I worked on this x part here. So if I call this equation one, if I substitute this result, substitute, uh, let's call this two, substitute two into one, what have I got here? Well, the left-hand side, uh, this, these x parts here, these x parts here, which I didn't need to go up, it's just this part here, right? Turns into this, so I can just uh, write all of that out. I can go x, take away x1 plus x2 onto all squared. On the right-hand side of the equation, I'll leave a bit of space here, I'm going to end up with this. But then, remember everything that we did for x, we can do for y as well, because it's exactly the same thing here, it's just uh, repeated over there with y's instead of x's. So everything that I just wrote, I can say it again for y minus y1 plus y2 all over 2 squared. So I've got the equivalent part on the left, I also need the equivalent part on the right, so it's just gonna have y's instead of x's. So, there you go. All right, this is fantastic, right? Because you can see the left-hand side is already there. I'm, I'm finished, right? Or at least on the left-hand side. I don't need to do any more manipulation on that. I can just focus on this right-hand side over here. Somehow, I've got to get to the fact that this is, what do I want? Half of AB squared, half of AB squared. Now, this is promising for two reasons. Number one, the square, I can see, like I've got, I've got squared stuff over here, right? That's positive. Um, in addition to that, I also have like, what is, um, there's, there's a half here, right? And a half that's being squared. Well, there's halves being squared down here. And then I've got AB. Well, what is AB? Um, AB is here, right? And you can see because I've labeled them as just X1, Y1, X2, Y2, that entire length AB, uh, let's, let's just, sort of drop it in here, um, I can just get using the distance formula, which is just Pythagoras, right? It's the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, because AB is just the hypotenuse of uh, a triangle where one of its sides is x1 minus x2 and the other side is y1 minus y2, and then you square it because that's how Pythagoras works. Now have a look at that, x1 minus x2, in fact I might even just copy this just so you can see it alongside the working that I'm currently doing. Have a look here, let's just change that to something else so we don't get distracted. There we go. So have a look at how similar these things are, right? I've got my x1 minus x2 squared right here up on the numerator. I've got my y1 minus y2 squared up on the numerator. So I'm actually so very close. I just need to do a little bit of tweaking and I'll be there. All right, so let's have a go. The first thing is, um, I want to, you, you can see on here, like the distance formula doesn't have that, uh, these, these fractions in it, because that comes from me saying halve the diameter, well, I don't know it's a diameter yet, but halve that length, um, and then that gets squared, which creates these uh, twos down the bottom here, right? So because I just want the distance formula, let's get those half squareds out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say just on the numerator here, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, and then that is all divided by 2 squared. Okay, so we'll come back to that 2 squared in a moment. Okay, now you can see on the numerator here, this is pretty much identical to what I have underneath the square root here. This is x1 minus x2 all squared. It's not pretty much identical. It is identical to what you have underneath the square root over here. Um, so you've got to be careful, right? How do I introduce a square root? Well, you can uh, introduce a square root if you introduce a square as well, because you don't actually want to change what's on the numerator there, right? But you can't just take the square root of something and then square it and expect you always get the same thing. For example, if you have a number like, uh, 
<laughs> if you have a number like negative uh, five and then you square it and then take the square root, okay? Uh, you don't end up with the number that you started with, you end up with uh, the positive version, okay? But if you uh, have something that you know is positive, if you, if you know that you start with a positive number, square it, then take the square root, or you could do it in reverse order as well, you know you're gonna end up with five because you're just staying in the realm of positive numbers. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna look and I'll say, hey, look at this numerator, right? Because we're dealing just with the real numbers, we're on the Cartesian plane, not the complex plane, uh, none of these things are going to be uh, imaginary. So when you take the difference and then you square it, you're gonna get something positive. When you take the difference and then you square it, you're gonna get something positive. So therefore, I can say that everything here is going to be positive, so I can do this square, square rooting move that I, I wanted to do before. So. Let me write that, that logic because it's quite important, right? Um, so I can say, um, but uh, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, that's going to be greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, I can say, let's take that whole thing, all of it, don't need this orange highlighting anymore. And I can pop the square root over the, well, that's really badly drawn. Let's do that again. There's a square root, draw that line over the top and then square it, right? So I can only do this move because I know that there's um, all of this going on here, right? And there's no complex numbers or anything like that. So just be wary of that. You can't just take the square root and square um, without being careful with your logic, okay? So have a look now, what have I got? I've got the numerator is squared, the denominator is squared, so therefore I'm just gonna ball that fraction all into one. Um, I've got the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Um, all of that is underneath the square root. And then uh, I also have that two on the denominator, I'm gonna write that as a fractional coefficient, and all of that, all of that is squared. But then I can say, hey, hey, this thing here, this is AB, everything underneath that square root. So I can say this is equal to half AB, all squared. I left that left-hand side behind because I had already finished with it. There we go, I'm done as required. Which, despite the fact that it took much longer than the first proof, is sort of satisfying in its own way, right? Because we didn't have to assume very much about the situation. We didn't even have a circle there, so we didn't use the circle properties like radii and stuff like that, like we did with the plane geometry proof. Um, the less you assume, the more work you have to do, and we actually did have to employ a lot of foundational knowledge from corner geometry, like what happens with um, the products of gradients of perpendicular lines and then all this algebraic knowledge and all that kind of thing. So you can see it ends up being quite lengthy, but we arrive at this same conclusion. Um, we've got the locus of P moving through this imaginary circle that we had before. So in conclusion, coming all the way back to this original problem, uh, I think it was Carl Friedrich Gauss, the um, German mathematician, who said that mathematics is comprised of thinking deeply about simple things. And there are a few things as simple as a circle, but there are all of these wonderful, detailed, um, intricate properties that they have, some of which you can prove easily, and then you wanna to have to think about, you know, doing the, the converse of that and getting your logic watertight. And that's what today was about. So I hope you found that interesting, that you're able to pursue uh, the, the deductive uh, reasoning that you're doing throughout the course, whether it's geometric or otherwise, and be really careful about how you know things are true and why, and um, relish in the fact that you can prove them. And once they're proven in mathematics, they're proven forever.